everybody. It is December 1st. I keep wanting to say January 1st. It is December 1st and it is the first day of Advent, which means it's the first day of tiny secret present season. I love tiny secret present season. It is also midweek in Hanukkah, so happy Hanukkah. I have two Advent calendars, two stitchy Advent calendars to open. This is the Forbidden Fiber Co. Yule Ball Mystery Stitch Along. So that's exciting. And then this is the Devere Yarns Silk Advent Calendar. And I think I got, well, I know I got, I got the thickest silk and I think it's divisible, but we'll see. And I'll show you that in like the face. When you see my face again, I will show you and we'll, we'll check that out. I also have a couple of Sneaky Snack Advent Calendars. Um, we have a Walker Shortbread. We have a Lint at, um, for both me and my husband. And then he got a tea, which is not an advent calendar, but it's 48 teas. And so we're going to have kind of like an afternoon advent snack. But you are here for Stitchy Advent. So I'm going to, well, first of all, I'm holding the camera. I don't know if this is going to work. It's an experiment. <laughs> we shall see. So first I want to do the Devere yarns. And I did not look for one, but luckily it's easy to find. So here's one in camera that's pretty isn't it carnation that's a really pretty color it's like a um it's a little pinker than I think you're seeing but there we go a nice pretty pink and now for the Yule ball box and I organized these so that they would be easier to find on camera and so far so good <laughs> so here we have number one and I love that I love these iridescent bags I'm going to keep these iridescent bags for happy mail all right so we have I'm assuming this is fabric and I'm just going to tear into this paper because one-handed, you know. Oh, people. Oh, my goodness. All right, you can't see it, so fabric. While dreaming up the thread colors for this pattern, we wanted to create a fabric with subtle coloring so that it would enhance your project. Rather than diminish it, we feel like we were able to do just that with this new colorway, Mythical. Okay, so you can't see, but it's an opalescent. Now I got, oh, you can kind of see. I think I'm gonna have to show you the colors when we get back to face, when you see my face. But it's, it's pinks and yellows, peaches. It actually would go great with the thread. I just got carnation. So that, my friends, is day one of Advent. See you tomorrow. Hi, everybody. It is... Thursday, December 2nd, and it is the second day of Advent and Tiny Present Month. And I'm, <laughs> I've been trying to get like a tripod or something to make this less shaky, but it just feels like too much effort. And I want this to be <laughs> just a simple opening of gifts in the morning thing. So I am, I've switched hands. So now my like working hand is my dominant hand, which is my right hand. And maybe that'll be better. But first we're going to do the Devere Yarns Advent Box. And this is in silk. It has a tiny door. Ooh, that's a pretty color. And that is Parrot. So we have these two pretty colors, which are very, um, I don't know, they're very springy, actually. And now we're going to the Yule Ball box by Forbidden Fiber Co. And today is a an envelope. So we have an envelope, which I'm assuming is part of the pattern. So if the pattern is only pattern, I will cut it out and then explain it to you. And if the pattern has a picture included in it, then I will show you that. Okay, so I can't actually show it to you because it is a pattern, but here, we'll put this in, in here. Uh, I can tell you that there are specialty stitches. There are straight stitches, which is an easy thing to do, and Smyrna crosses, which is really fun. And honestly, I can't even really tell you what the pattern is. <laughs> 
there are some swirls there are some straight stitches sorry about the wrestling but I can't give you any any hints about what it might be which I guess is the point of a mystery style so I'll leave it at that and I'll see you tomorrow bye bye okay it is Friday December 3rd I have no idea what day it is it's Friday December 3rd and I have my two advent calendars to open with you I have my Devere Yarns silk calendar and I didn't look at it first here's three and this comes in silks Ooh, that's nice it's a dark gray brown it looks a little taupey it's not really taupey night but night with a k so i'm assuming like armor which feels very fitting for medievalist so that's my devere yarns and then my yule ball from forbidden fiber co is this and i'm sorry for the crinkles but i'm just going to open it up on top of here Project bag. Use this one of a kind hand dyed project bag to keep your project threads and knickknacks together in one safe place. We love how the colors mimic a night sky covered in stars. That's fantastic. And I have actually started the project, but I will show you that in my floss tube in a couple hours um, since it's Friday. And yeah, project bag day three. That is exactly what I was looking for. It's like she read my mind. I'll see you in the, you know, in the corner. Bye. Hey everyone, my name is Christy. Welcome to my corner. Thank you for joining me today on this Floss Tube Friday for Floss Tube number 61. You should have just seen a compilation of the advent calendars that I opened this week and I will show you the contents of them in a little bit up close and personal because I'm not very good at like filming live and like I'm not good at showing you all the details of things. So I will do that in this video and I will try and do better about that in future videos. And I think this is kind of how my Flossmas is gonna go where on Tuesdays and Fridays, I'll show you my openings right at the beginning and then I will pop on and do some do a little FaceTime with you. <laughs> but other than Advent, I have two new starts. I have two fully finished objects. I have a whip, I have some stitchy, tool haul which I'm kind of excited about and I got one of my stitchy secret Santa gifts in from Allegro Stitches who has a YouTube I'll link her down below so we have a lot of fun stuff to talk about today but before we get to any of that I want to welcome my new subscribers thank you so much for joining me on my artistic and crafty adventures and welcome back to everyone who's been hanging out with me for however long you've been with me it has been great to get to know you in the comments here on YouTube and also on Instagram and if you're not following me on Instagram you can follow you can find me in two places and I will actually put them up this time I noticed when I watched my video back last time that I didn't actually put them up but you can find my kind of daily stitching and life stuff and I think I think next semester I'm going to do an outfit of the day because I've been doing a little bit of stress clothing shopping <laughs> just to make myself feel confident about going back into the classroom I haven't been in the classroom in two years anyway so if you if you're interested in seeing that kind of stuff you can find that at, do at dr underscore christy which I'll put right here or it should already be there, honestly. And if you're interested in like my spoolie adventures, the jewelry and home decor items that I make out of vintage spools like this wreath here, you can find that at this spoolery, which is gonna be over here. This is a channel about embroidery and cross stitch and other textile crafts and baking and history and the history of all of those things. So if you're interested in any of that and you're not subscribed, I'd love to have you subscribe and stick around. I'm feeling really good today. I cut my bangs this morning, so they are more kind of my style. I like a little micro bang. I was feeling really shaggy. Now I just have to get the rest of my hair cut and then I'll be happy. I also thought I put on like a glamorous green top and some lip just so that way you know, it's the festive season, festive season. Speaking of festive seasons, before we get into any of this, I get a text from my stepmother yesterday. We go to my aunt's house for Christmas every year. I've only ever missed it a couple times in my entire 40, almost two years of existence. And that's where we go, we go to my aunt's house. So apparently my cousin decided that we should dress up as our favorite Christmas characters. Not our favorite Christmas characters, but dress up as Christmas characters for um, Christmas this year. And so my stepmom, 
texts me and tells me this. And I know that she was that she was expecting me to be like, that is stupid and I'm not doing it. But in fact, I, t I literally said, oh no, it is on exclamation point, exclamation point. Because if we're doing this, I'm doing it. Rich is not coming back with me. I'm going by myself to see my family for Christmas. He has work to do here. So what I decided, and I've already bought it, well, I've, I've ordered it, it should be coming in, is that I'm going to be Ebenezer Scrooge at night. So I'm going to be like in the dressing gown in like the shirt, in like the sleep shirt with the dressing gown with like the floppy hat. I gotta make the floppy hat. And this is, I'm modeling this off of the Muppets Christmas Carol <laughs> version of A Christmas Carol, which is my favorite version, obviously. Anyway, speaking of festive seasons, so I'm feeling very festive today. I thought I'd look festive for you. So let's talk about my stitching. I have two fully finished objects and they are both the Christmas ornaments. You've seen the stitching already, but I fully finished both of those Christmas ornaments, the Santa, which ended up looking like this. Um, and this was the German Santa from the December, January, 1990 cross quick magazine that I asked you all to vote on. And I'll put that link up here of that episode. So you can see all the, like all the details and stuff like that. And I love how he turned out. Um, I, and you saw him, most of him, fin you saw him mostly finished last week, but I did add some bells and I added a gold string, a gold kind of trim on to hang it up. And I really like how it turned out, like really like how it turned out. That's kind of more my style. The other one, I may have gotten a little silver sparkly trim happy. So this is how that one turned out. This is the Cardinal and the Snowflake or Birds and Snowflakes, the Cardinal. And this is from the Just Cross Stitch magazine from I think February of 2020 and is the winter edition. And this was a gift to me from a friend. The Cross Quick magazine I got from my local thrift store. Because it's on a snowflake, I decided I wanted to make it into a hexagon. And I decided to put the this red trim on, this red fabric on the back. And then I'm like, well, it needs something else. And so I put some piping on and then I'm like, ah, that looks a little bit messy. So, and I had put the silver, the silver hanger on and I'm like, I'm just going to go all out and put silver trim all over it. And I really actually really like how it looks from the front. Cause from the front, you see like the little silver loops around the whole thing. And I think it looks great. The back is a little bit loud. It's a little, not my style, but I kind of. I kind of love it and I hope that she loves it too. I also incl included like a pair of scissors and hand lotion and a needle minder and, and floss and a nice silk bag. So like there's other stuff in the package. So even if, the, <laughs> even if my recipient is not thrilled with the stitching itself, the other stuff it should be worth it. I hope. <laughs> I hope. I just keep trying to tell myself that I do really actually like it and I think it looks kind of adorable. And it looks actually, when I looked at it in like the picture when I posted it on Instagram this morning, I liked it much better than when I saw it in person. So I'm hoping that, I don't know, it's growing on me. <laughs> so those are my two fully finished objects and they are shipped out and gone. And so that's super exciting. I do have my one whip that I'm working on and that is my temperature library um, that I designed. And this is the embroidery version. I also have a cross stitch version and people have been really loving it. So I'm really excited that you're loving it. So I had hoped to be done with all the books in November by this week, but that just didn't happen. So I think I have four to go, four books to go. That's pretty good. And I will be stitching with this on this with my mom on Sunday, I'm assuming. It's been a while. We haven't seen each other in a while. She's been away and I've been busy. <laughs> my plan is to, I mean, I'm caught up essentially. Mostly. I'm mostly caught up. I'm mostly caught up. Yeah, I'm pleased. So I will be finishing this this month. This is the plan is to have this as a finished object this month. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. I might hang it up, put it on a pillow. I have a little red couch. My couch right here is red. And so this might look really cute actually just having an array of pillows along the whole thing. I don't know. So this is stitched on a bleached linen, which is uh, just a linen yardage from fabricstore.com and it is stitched in the DMC colors that I provide with the pattern. I do think I'm going to actually change my temperature chart, my temperature uh, table for next year. I, I don't like how, I don't know, I feel like winter, spring and 
fall look really fun. But the summer is very samey and I didn't use two colors. Like it just didn't get very hot. It got really humid, but like it didn't get super hot. It didn't get above 96 degrees as a high here in Fahrenheit, obviously. It didn't get 90, above 96 degrees in Celsius either. We don't live on Venus, so it wouldn't. <laughs> because of that, I definitely want to adjust my temperature pattern because I'd rather have like add extra at the top if I go above 100 degrees or something then plan for it and not hit it and not get that number. Hey all, editing Christy here. I forgot to mention in the video when I was recording last time, but if you're interested in stitching the temperature library for 2022, but you want a paper copy, Pam from Stitching in the Land of Good Enough has opened a new needle workshop in Massachusetts called Stitch New England. And she is carrying these charts in paper. I'll link to the website down below or stop into her store and get that. So that's important. If you want to stitch it on paper, Stitch New England is the place to go. Link is down below. Back to the corner. That's the plan for next year. This is all housed in my book bag that I made. And I really hope to do a good bit of pattern, not pattern, project bag making this winter because I'm starting to clean up in here and this is like where my sewing and stuff is and after my craft fair it was a disaster and it's slowly becoming not as big of a disaster that is however my only whip that previous from previous whip but I have two new starts my first new start is Hildegard of Bingen's Cosmic Egg she is started. So this is what she is going to look like. She is, a, she's a she because Hildegard of Bingen was a she. And I have a tiny little middle start. This is a design that I've done before. It is my favorite medieval image by a woman named Hildegard of Bingen, who was a 12th century nun. I'll put, in, I made a video about her. I'll put it up there. You'll be seeing this a lot because this is going to be a long project. This is the inside of the project. So this is kind of this middle part here. And then there's the whole outside. So eventually this is going to go on a frame like my temperature library is on a frame. So this is going to go on a frame. But for now, it's living in a hoop quite happily. And it started. And I started it on December 1st. So that is super exciting to me. And it is my own design. And I just did the colors by sight. So this is the, these are the same colors I used woo, for my last one. And they're all different brands. And they're very, they're kind of muted. I love them. I'm so pleased with this. And then if you look at this picture, the dark blue parts are actually watercolor. So I'm going to be doing those in watercolor again. And that is like this whole inside here is going to, the background is going to be watercolor and then parts of the outside here are going to be watercolor. And then these little parts here are gold leaf. So this isn't completely full coverage stitching, but it is very full coverage in image. That is, that's a go. It's so exciting. The other start that I had was my advent calendar that I mentioned that you saw me open up my Forbidden Fiber Co. advent calendar. So let me give you some details. So day number three was this project bag, which is exactly what I was needing because I was like just rolling it up. So this is perfect. And it comes with a unicorn scissor fob with a really large lobster claw, which I like a lot. And inside we have the pattern, which I can't show you. But what I can show you is my start. And this, this is an 18 count Ada called Mythical. I don't remember if I said mystical or mythical in the video. It's called Mythical. It's Forbidden Fiber Co. And it is like pink and white modeled, very nice. And this is my start. I don't know if you can even see it on there. Oh, you kind of can. This is my little start. And I'm going to guess that this is the snow on a house. And this is the smoke coming up from the house. That's my guess. This is diamond. It's stitched in diamond by Forbidden Fiber Co. And this is the only color we have so far. So 
this is my first mystery stitch along that I've participated in. And all of the ones that I have seen on floss tube are like the caterpillar cross stitch mystery stitch along where you get like a chunk of it and you move around. So I get this and I get my first chart, first day chart, and it has one color in it, which, you know, is fine, which I was expecting. Well, first of all, I didn't know that the thought that the floss came in the chart envelope because it doesn't say that anywhere. So I pulled the chart out and then just didn't have floss and just figured it would come in a, in a later thing. Luckily, Pam from Stitching the Land of Good Enough got this also. And so she opened hers and I like ran out and I'm like, I have, I have floss. I'm so excited. So that was the first thing that I wish had been explained better. The second thing I wish had been explained better is that, well, first of all, the orientation of the fabric, because it is not square and I am not confident in deciding which way to go. So I messaged Pam. Thank you, Pam, for helping me. And, and I said, I think it should go horizontally, but I'm not sure. What do you think? And she's like, yes, definitely horizontally. I'm like, okay, good. And I'm like, how big is it? Because I'm a top right starter because I stitch in hand sewing method. So, and I'm right-handed. So I go this way. That works best for me. And she said, well, this is probably the entire pattern. Just most of it's not in yet. So essentially you get the whole stitching field, the field of stitching, <laughs> and it fills in every other day what it is. And I wish that that had been explained better too, because I didn't know that. And it, it, and it hadn't even occurred to me that that was a thing. I can't be the only one who's never done a project like this. And anyway, I'm just so thankful that Pam was willing to answer my questions. <laughs> Because I got to start this last night and I didn't think I was going to start it last night. So we're going to close that up. But isn't this adorable? It looks like a starry sky with a moon. It's hand dyed. Um, I don't have the paper with this. I, it was funny. Like I, I literally was working on this last night and I was like, oh God, I gotta go find a project bag. I gotta put this in a Ziploc bag or something because, and then today I got a project bag. So far I'm really excited. And the design I think is a Michelle... Bendy stitchy design. I'm sorry I keep opening and closing this, but I keep forgetting to put stuff in it. Thrilled so far with days one, two, and three of Forbidden Fiber Co. And tomorrow I should be, should be getting a new pattern piece, which I can work on tonight. Oh, I have another whip. I forgot. I have a second whip. I have been working on my Lindy Stitches Hedgehog House quilt. So this is the Hedgehog House cross stitch that Lindy Stitches designed. And I got this in a stitchy box stash delights box, I'm pretty sure, back in the spring. And I decided that, well, in Stitch Mayhem, which is something that Tony the Stubborn Stitcher came up with, basically she, her idea of May, what, what, what a stitcher should do in May, is do a craft that is not your normal craft. So she is a cross stitcher and so she took on an embroidery project. I am an embroiderer and cross stitcher and so I took on a quilting project. And what I decided to do was quilt the hedgehog house. Well, the hedgehog and a flower. And so these are all the pieces laid out. This is what it's going to look like eventually. And I'm about halfway, I'm a little over halfway done piecing all of the rows together. And so these are those rows. I finally hit the flower. That's, this is the bottom of the flower. So that's super exciting. And they're all numbered. And this is, this is the hedgehog here. That's the hedgehog. And this is the hedgehog and the flower. So I'm excited with my progress on this. My goal is to have it done by the end of the year, the piecing done by the end of the year. And then I can pick a border and a background and it's gonna go right up here above my, my red couch, which is why I turned the color of the flower from pink to red to match my couch. Other than the hedgehog pieces, all these other ones I had, uh, this, these are fabric from Stash. They're all different kind of kinds of fabric. The hedgehog is like a very loose weave, so I have to be careful with it, but the rest of it's like a Kona cotton or a cotton from when I was making all those, all those masks for COVID. So that is my second whip. I do have a second whip. That's my stitching. I do have some haul. Now my haul, I, I, I got sucked into some Black Friday sales 
uh, and discounts and stuff like that. So I want to talk about those. I have a vintage, a little bit of vintage haul. And, and then I have the happy mail from my secret Santa. So first of all, I want to talk about this. This is a slap bracelet. It's a slap bracelet with a magnet attached to it. And so I stitch in hand, so I can't really use a needle minder. So I've been putting it in my teeth, which is such a bad idea. And I had broken that habit when I put needle minders on my thing, on my hooped pieces. But for cross stitch, I don't do that. So I got this and it is the best thing ever. The best. I got this from Penguin and Fish. I'll put a link down below. I love it so much. I've been using this for all of my cross stitching pieces and I'm thrilled. So that is amazing. And it had a needle on it when I put it in this bag. The bag, by the way, this was a gift from Jody of Trixie Tricycle in her amazingly generous gift bag, gift box she sent me. Um, and this is from the Black Needle Society October countdown box, Halloween countdown box. Um, I'm not gonna look for my needle right now, but I'm hoping that it's in there. <laughs> so I'll put this back in here. The other thing that I got for myself is I got, I broke down and I got myself some um, magnifiers. I had to take off the nose piece because it was interfering with my glasses and it messes up my hair, something terrible. But this is the kind that has multiple different lenses. So this is the two times lens and it also has a light, which will be good for when I'm traveling. I don't know that I need it all the time, but I definitely need it for difficult stitches for small counts, but also for stitches like this, where it's light on light, because it's very difficult for me to see. And it was kind of a game changer. Although when I put them on, I did notice how bad and and uneven my stitches were <laughs> in a way that I hadn't noticed before. So, you know, <laughs> that's something to think about, but maybe it'll just make them, it'll just mean that they're better. I placed, um, I got some other things from Penguin and Fish too. I got some really fun zippers that are of multiple colors. So this is the yellow and the pink one. I'm not going to show them all to you, but basically I got zippers that the, with these big loops and the separate colors. So I thought that would be fun just to play around with for project bags. And I'm a sucker for a mystery bag, box, gift, whatever. And so when you check out a penguin and fish, they're like, would you like a mystery gift? And I'm like, heck yeah, $10 mystery gift. Boop. So I put that in my cart. So I got some mini skeins of embroidery floss. She has her own embroidery floss. And this may be a giveaway at some point. It's maybe a giveaway at some point. And I got a sticker, a holographic hummingbird sticker. This is one of her designs. This was a cross stitch design. I mean, an embroidery design. And then a little notepad with a stitched up dino T-Rex. So those are cute. I'm really, I really enjoy these. And then I got myself a couple of vintagey things. These I actually bought back in September. They were held up in Chicago for two months. Emer, the Irish stitcher, mentioned that her pro her package was held up in Chicago for several months. Mine was too. But I got some vintage Ginger stork scissors and they are too loose to cut, but you know, they're pretty and I will put them in my collection when I, when I start displaying my scissors. So I'm excited about that. I may make myself like a spool vintage scissor holder. That's a good idea. But then you know that I love tiny things. Well, those of you who've been with me for a while know I love tiny things. And so I got a tiny little sewing kit and it has a thimble in it. Now you can see everything. It has a thimble. You can see the mess that is my room and it opens up. I'm telling you, I open this up. It opens up into like this tiny thing, but that's not all. You pull out the thimble. We'll put the thimble on my pinky and it has two tiny little metal thread rings. And so you can put your needle in here 
and put this on and close it up. And it's this beautiful brass. I love it. And that's the bottom. I'm so excited. This is like the cutest tiny thing. I love it. I love tiny things that are useful. I love it. So those are my purchases. Nothing too crazy. I've, I've sort of calmed down, down a bit since my rush to buy things for my craft fair, but I'm excited by those. I also have a fabric experiment that's currently processing that I will show you next week that I'm really excited about. I'm trying a new, well, you'll see. I'm really excited about it. So I have that happening. And so I want to talk about my stitchy kindness from Amy at Allegro Stitches. Um, she wrote me a lovely note. She was worried that she wouldn't be able to get me something that I didn't already have. But she did. No worries. Because I don't have a single scissors fob. And she got me a scissors fob. And it's so funny because I was actually planning on, I have a plan to make scissors fobs. And this one has a little piece on the end to put on your scissors. And I use that on my scissors. And my plan was <laughs> to make some scissors fobs with like antique spools and these things. And then she gave me one so I can see if I like it. So I'm going to be putting that on one of my scissors that I use to see if I like it and if I want to make more but I love it. So I have that. She also gave me a charm, which I'm, I can use for any number of things. And this is from Boutique Charms, or is it Boutique Charms? No, it's Boutique Charms. So there is the information for Boutique Charms, which is where this is. And I'm assuming that's also where the scissors fob comes from. And then she also sent me a beautiful pin that looks like a little, a little angel. Isn't that beautiful? So that can go in one of my fancy, not so fancy, but one of my fancy pin cushions that I've made. My magnetic pin cushion also came with these pins, but I just put them on the same little, the little piece here. She got me happy birthday chocolate, which I have already eaten and a couple of Godiva chocolates. But of course, the main event was the stitching and the ornaments. And Amy watches my channel sometimes, she said, and she knows that I like a stitched object that can be used for something. So she made me something that has two options. She made me this beautiful blue and white and gold stitch ornament that could also be used as a coaster. Isn't that genius? I love it. I love it so much. So I am not going to use it as a coaster. I'm going to put it on my tree because I think it's beautiful and it deserves to be on my tree. And we don't, we're not precious about our tables. So we don't really use coasters. So we just get lost. So I don't want to get a lost. So it's going to go on my tree. And isn't that beautiful? Look at that. I don't know what the pattern is. She might comment below and let me know. I mean, you know, there we go. It's best we, there we go. That's better. But this was a beautiful, a beautiful thing to get. So thank you so much, Amy. Um, Allegro Stitches, I will link her down below. She has a floss tube and she's also on Instagram as Allegro Stitches. That's all the stuff I have to show you. I do want to mention a couple of things. I do have a giveaway happening for my 1,000 subscriber giveaway. And it is this possum bag that I got from my local bookstore. And some goodies inside. You can hear the goodies inside including a pair of scissors and a pin cushion and all sorts of stuff. So if you want to see what's in the bag and you want to enter, you need to go back to my November 30th video, which was last Tuesday, which is the, the video before this and watch that video. And that will give you all the information about that. I also want to remind you that I will be having a stitch along for my birthday and I will be starting a hate, my first hate on December 28th, which is my birthday. I will be 42, which as you know, is the answer to life, the universe and everything. And it seemed like a significant birthday, right? 42. And so I thought I would start a big project and I'm doing the lady and the unicorn, which the lady and the unicorn, I'm doing the lady and the unicorn. 
which looks like this. I'm doing the desire. And this is on the Hayde web, the heaven and earth design website. And Jessica, the rainy day stitcher is also doing uh, one of the tapestries in this series. She's doing sight, which looks like this. And we are going to have a long term general medieval themed hashtag party like it's 1399 Sal. <laughs> Every time I say that it makes me laugh. In conjunction with that, I'm having a birthday, a specific birthday stitch along hashtag, which basically I'm asking you to stitch on something broadly historically themed on my birthday, tag me on Instagram and I will put it in my stories. And that tag is history birthday Sal. I'll put it right here. So yeah, if you want to help me celebrate my 42nd birthday, stitch on something that you love, stitch on a, a whip that is history themed. And, and this is like, you know, a historical sampler or your oldest whip, you know, whatever. It's very broadly defined. Basically, I just want to have like a virtual birthday party because I probably won't be having an actual in-person birthday party. Along the same lines, I think I'm going to be having a virtual birthday Zoom party, craft party. So I will have the details for that later on in the month. So kind of keep watching if you're interested and hanging out with me for a little bit on my birthday. It will just be a drop in hang out, stitch a bit, leave when you have to, you know, that kind of a thing. I will have a sign up sheet so that I can regulate how many people and make sure that you are who you say you are when you pop in. I don't want any kind of ugliness, zoom bombing and stuff like that. So I'll have a sign up sheet with all that good stuff, but that'll be, I'll talk about that in later videos. That is all my stitchy content. So if you are only here for stitching and don't care about my book, then thank you so much for joining me. If you are interested in my book or confused about why I'm talking about a book in my floss tube, you can find a video about my book up here. The TLDR is that I'm a medieval historian who is writing a book and you all were my writing group. My sabbatical ended yesterday, so I kind of want to do a wrap up um, of what I did. And I didn't prepare for this. I didn't look at what I, I didn't look at my notes and stuff, but I spent the semester reading. I am disappointed. I, I had hoped to get further, but with everything that was going on, I am way further along than I was before. And I have read thousands of pages. I read and took notes on roughly 50 books and articles which is pretty good. I have to be honest with you. I read more than that because there's some stuff that like I didn't take notes on because it wasn't relevant, but you have to read it to find out if it's relevant. So that takes time. I did finally make it through that canon law book. That was a slog. So I really struggled getting through this one chapter that was like 50 pages long. That guy wrote a second 50 pages long chapter and then wrote a third 45 pages long chapter with someone else. And he's brilliant. He is like the expert on this. He is not a good writer. And so when his colleague takes over at the end, she's about my age. Um, we've met, she actually introduced me to the sources that I ended up using in my dissertation like 15 years ago. Her writing is so much better. And so as soon as like his part ended and hers started, I'm just like, oh, finally. I don't always agree with all of her conclusions, but God, at least I can like read her. So that was a, um, that was a triumph. <laughs> Finishing that book was a triumph. And I did actually have something I wanted to talk about from that book, but I don't remember what it was. So if I come up with it, then that'll be good. So starting next week, I need to start planning for my spring semester classes, which is fine. But I also have to remind myself that I can, that I still, need to read and I still need to write. So that's going to be kind of next week where I'll continue reading like an article or a chapter in the morning and then work on my classes and that kind of a thing. But I really need to focus on having my courses prepped and ready. The more prepped my courses are, the more time I have in the spring for working on my book. And that's good. The other thing I wanted to say is that some of you who've been around for a couple of months know that I applied for a fellowship at my university. Um, I did not get that fellowship. On the plus side, that's way less work for next semester so I can work on my book and that'll be fine. I think that's it for me. Thank you so much for joining me today and, and you know, hanging out and talking about my stitching and, and all my other fun stuff. I'm really excited about the stuff that's going to be happening in the next week. I'm hoping to get a haircut next week and get my oil changed. And I just feel like 
I just feel like things are gonna be good. <laughs> I feel like I feel like things are going to be good. So I will see you next Tuesday. Please take good care of yourselves and have a good one. Bye.